Hi everyone. Welcome to the Basic Science audio series by Dr. Lukender Kumar. I have created this audio program to promote scientific knowledge among students and young researchers. This first episode is dedicated to the life and scientific achievements of first microbiologist Antony van Leeuwenhoek. Man with the power to see invisible things. A microbiologist is a person who study microorganisms, the organisms that we cannot see with our eyes. They are very tiny, really small living creatures. But my definition, according to my experience, is little different. I say a microbiologist is a person who grows and kills microorganisms again and again to answer a specific scientific question. In this chapter, we have two parts. One chapter will tell us about his life and the second chapter will tell us about his major scientific discoveries. Let's start with Anthony's life. He was an ordinary Dutch businessman, but he became a prominent scientist during the golden age of Dutch science and technology. What an in interesting story, isn't it? But more importantly, he was a self-taught man in science. And that is also turned out to be the most important factor for making him the first microbiologist and the father of microbiology. His former education was incomplete and he went to school for a small period of time. This tells us that for achieving heights in the life, we need determination and strong willpower. Yet basic education and the experience is also important. At the same time, too much of the information also affects the creative thinking of an individual. Anyways, let's start with the birth of Anton. Antony van Leeuwenhoek. He was born in Dutch Republic on 24th October 1632. His father, Philip van Leeuwenhoek, was a basket maker, which is not considered as a high income profession. Besides that, his father died when Antony was only five years old. His mother, Margarita, remarried, but unfortunately, his stepfather was also died when Antony was just 10 years old. I must say that there's a lot of death for a young kid to see at such an early age. Anyhow, with his struggling life, he was able to attend a school for a very short time. And then he was sent to live with, with his uncle. Due to family circumstances, he has to work and leave the school. At the age of 16, he became a bookkeeper's apprentice. Later, Antony married Barbara de May in July 1657, with whom he fathered only one surviving daughter, Maria. Four other children died in their infancy. Death again chased Antony's life. But still, this man has his determination and destiny to do great thing in his future. We all have lived blessed life and we still complain too much without thinking that what others might have gone through in their life. That same year, he returned to Delft where he opened a rapper shop and he lived and studied for rest of his life. Rapper shop means a retailer or a wholesaler for clothing. This was the first part of the story that tells us how father of microbiology lived his early life. I would say it was not easy at all. He was born in a poor family. His father died at a very early age. He was not able to get basic education. He struggled financially and he also had to see his children suffering and death. But yet, Antony was about to become the father of microbiology with something that was going to happen 
in his life. Let's move to the next part. That is the story of his scientific excellence. While running his show off, Antony wanted to see the quality of thread better than what was possible using the magnifying glasses at that time. Therefore, he developed an interest in lens making. That is where he proved that necessity is the mother of invention. After developing his method for creating powerful lens, he applying them to seize these small organisms. Antony introduced his work to his friend, the prominent Dutch physician, Werner de Graaf. And with his help, the Royal Society in London published the groundbreaking work of an Italian lens maker in their general philosophical transactions of the Royal Society. At first, he had been reluctant to publish his finding regarding himself as a businessman with little or no scientific, artistic or writing background. But his friend Degarv urged him to be more confident in his work. Therefore, it is very important that you surround yourself with sincere and great people that can help you guide through the tough phases of life. Despite the initial success of Antony's relationship with the Royal Society, soon the relationship becomes severely strained. Why? Because in 1676, his credibility was questioned when he sent the Royal Society a copy of his first observation of microscopic single-celled organism. Previously, the existence of single-celled organism was entirely unknown. Thus, even with his established reputation with Royal Society, as a reliable observer, his observations of microscopic life were initially met with some skepticism. But later, after careful consideration, in 1677, Antony's observations were fully acknowledged and recognized by Royal Society. Antony van Leeuwenhoek was elected to the Royal Society in February 1680 on the nomination of William Crony, a then prominent physician. Lewinhock was surprised by the nomination, which he considered as the highest honor. Although he never attended the induction ceremony or never attended any Royal Society meetings. Also, to the disappointment to many scientists, Antony refused to reveal his technology and he never showed his collection of high quality lenses or how to make those lenses. Because he was an experienced businessman and as an experienced businessman, Antony believed if he, if he explained his method for creating the critically important lens the scientific community of his time would likely disregard or even forget his role in microscopy. Antony made more than 500 optical lenses. He also created at least 25 single lens microscopes, of which only nine have survived. These microscopes were made up of silver and copper frames holding handmade lenses. These have survived that are capable, capable to magnify the object to 275 to 500 times. Antony maintained throughout his life that there are aspects of microscopic construction which he only keep for himself, specifically how to make lenses. For many years, no one was able to reconstruct his design. And later in 1957, C.L. Strong used thin glass threads and was able to make lens similar to Antonius lens. So how did he make lens? That's a very interesting question. The technology which was hidden for almost 100 years. 
he made his lens by placing the middle of a small rod of soda lime glass in a hot flame. And Tony could, could pull the hot section apart to create two long threads of glass. And then by reinserting the one end of the thread into flame, he was able to make small high quality glass spheres. These spheres become the lens of his microscope with the smallest sphere giving the highest magnification. His major finding include the observations of protists, bacteria, vacuole inside the cell, spermatozoa, and the bended pattern present in our muscles. By the end of his life, Antony had written 560 letters to Royal Society and to other scientific institution. Later, he suffered from a rare disease, an uncontrolled movement of the waist region, which is now known as Van Leeuwenhoek's disease. On his importance in the history of microbiology and science in the British biochemist society, Nick Lane wrote that he was the first with the power to see Unfortunately, he died at the age of 90 on 26th August, 1723. That was the end of an era. Thank you very much, Anton, when living hope for your discoveries. If you like my work, please share the audio series with your friends, specifically the young students and stay tuned for the next audio series. Please give suggestions and comments so that I can make improvements in the next chapter and please forget my mistakes. Thank you very much. Namaste.